Hi, I'm Jameson Newlander, Alan Frog from The Lost Boys, and you're watching the Frog Brothers Podcast. That's what we do with all this from a spooky ghost. It's refreshment time, folks. Are either one of these any good? And do you like scary movies? I don't watch movies. I have to return some videotapes. You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. I don't need a TV. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me Shell. It's the fucking truth. Over 1,600 titles, each for rent at just $2 the first night, and only a... Finish him. I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention they show shows, right? Watch a few movies, take a few notes. Okay, one channels 18, 24, 63, 987, and weather channel. Welcome to the Frog Brothers Podcast with your hosts, Justin and Alec. Hello, and welcome to episode 115 of the Frog Bros Podcast. My name is Justin. My name is COVID. Alec is recording Home Alone tonight. The Kevin yeah. McAllister who lives here. When I grow up, I'm living alone. Besides the animals. Well, yeah. Those are good companions, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick is phoning in tonight, so uh, Mix Nick is remote. So we're, we're all we're all separately recording here. Yes, we are. The power of that. I'm live. We're all live. And I must inform. All of you, both of you and our audience, that I am completely naked. That's as is, terrifying. As is, as is my normal way when I am home. Hmm. What do you do if there's a fire? See, I don't like that because then you just end up leaving like butt fibers everywhere. Oh, yeah. You don't, you leave your funky. You got to really take good care of your ass if you're oh. hanging around naked all the time. I hope you really have like baby wipes and you're like literally just wiping your ass all the time with those. Well, I mean, sometimes I wear boxers, but like if I'm like blanketed up, all snug on my couch here watching TV, there's no point wearing any underwear. And I got a nice, <laughs> I nice don't know, soft blanket. I got a nice soft blanket below me. I guess if you got something there that you can wash easily and protect your furniture. Yeah, my my ass isn't directly on the couch. Okay, that's what I was worried about. I was like, that's okay. it's like there's a difference. Note to self: that. never sit on Nick's furniture. Well, also, um, with a leather with, with with a leather couch, um, eventually your body oil will will completely destroy it. So, yeah, if you have bare skin on leather, you don't want to do that regularly. Yeah, you want to use some leather conditioner on there if you're going to do that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> I prefer faux leather myself, but that's just. <clears throat> me. I think this is real leather, but but I also eat cheeseburgers, so it doesn't matter. I was going to say, yeah, in your world, that's all. <laughs> That's like the buffalo used the whole thing. <laughs> All right. So we got a few things in the news. We got a fun episode for us tonight. Um, number one thing is, so when the Ghostbusters Afterlife Ultimate box set dropped, I ordered through a website called Deep Discount. <clears throat> had a good price when Amazon had sold out initially of their original listing. And some places like jumped the price to 150 to 200 bucks. And so I was like, okay, I'll try it. Hearing mixed reviews about the site, I got my product delivered. No, no worries. Anything like that. Cool. You had the right discs, right? Yep. I had everything correct in my set. Which was an issue people well, didn't having. Yeah. Didn't but... our our Ghostbuster friend Jason Whelan say that he had ordered from them before as well? Yeah, he's the one that actually suggested them. And then yeah. um I think word got around that they had some of the box set on deep discount after Amazon was sold out and a few other retailers were. So anyway, long story short. Ghostbusters Afterlife score was originally released and announced for an overseas pre-order. I canceled that pre-order because I didn't want to pay the fees. I was going to save like $25 by not having to pay the uh, EU standard pricing and then shipping. So no big deal. Well, it released last week on Amazon. I got a release notice from Amazon saying, hey, it's delayed or they sold out at too many of the pre-releases, whatever the story was. <laughs> so I saw somebody in YHS Group Therapy and I think it was Jim Mariato. Forgive me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sorry if I was, but he's like, hey, Deep, Deep Discount has it in stock shipping right now. So I was like, yeah, I'll keep my Amazon order and then I'll uh, order from there too. And if I need to cancel my Amazon order, because it said like late July is what it was anticipating shipping. So I've wow. already, got a, already got a shipment notification today for the Afterlife score on vinyl. So 
If you end up with another one somehow on accident, I'll buy it from you. Well, just I mean, in no place to buy it right now. So, yeah. Yeah. but I saw, uh, Ghost, I saw Ghostbusters news or somebody posted an article about shortages and stuff, and people are getting uh, a lot of delay notifications or cancellations because there's just not enough to fulfill the orders. Which is hilarious. Like, why are you taking these orders and not having the product? Right. Well, I think there's been huge issues with vinyl, especially. I know a lot of oh yeah done in the, in the United States has been exported for other places. Like every place that's booking booking vinyl in the United States is like ways out from having anything available. Well, I mean, what I'm, what I'm about to say is uh, something that's a little more speculative and not just like cold hard fact, but I've heard that there are basically factories that are just like printing one record. Like, because that's how many they're printing of the same one. And that's part of the problem is these major labels are all printing vinyl again. And now, uh, the indie, like 10 years ago, it was only indie labels, and it was a niche. And now, you buy fucking vinyl at Walmart and Target again, and, and everybody's doing it. It's a trendy thing for everybody now. And uh, yeah, That's why the price of vinyl skyrocketed, too. Like, the average, not even 180 gram vinyl. The average exactly. vinyl release now is like 30 to $35 at Walmart or Target for what they're carrying. Let alone any kind of record day exclusive or anything else awesome that might be coming out. What is what is vinyl like? Where does vinyl come from? Like, what's the whole origin and process of making it? Vinyl is fucking crazy in the original is way. It, if you're talking about, is there is there a vinyl tree? Is it a bush? Where where, where does it grow? It's not a uh, like a rubber tree where you can get some rubber. It's not, from it. it's not a vinyl rubber tree. No, vinyl is no. essentially like a type of plastic. So. Um, and they basically take down pebbles of plastic and press it into the vinyl. That's how they do all the cool colors and the, you know, the multicolors. They'll basically drop the crystals, mix crystals of the vinyl in there and melt it. So the shortage is just because they're not used to producing it at this rate. But now that vinyl... Right. Once vinyl went away, a lot of the manufacturers shut down, right? And there are still some niche vinyl places, you know, like punk rock. A lot of punk rock labels never stopped making vinyl. A lot of independent releases never stopped. But it was just never to this quantity. So when... You know, in the early to, I'd say 2010 and on was when vinyl really started picking up again in the mainstream level with record store day and those types of things. And so that's when the outright release of it just became huge. And then, you know, you stop doing CDs and other stuff. So people still want that physical release for a collector's sake. And that's probably a better way to do it than a CD collection at this point, you know. Yeah. Bigger artwork, better, you know, better yeah. packaging, more exclusivity. You can do different colors and mm -hmm. things like that. So. It's just one of those things that's so expensive that I'm like, eh. I'm ever yeah, I mean, rich, maybe I'd consider getting more vinyl. <laughs> well, it used to be you'd be able to go and like get used vinyl at places, secondhand shops for next to nothing, and now people are overcharging it, just like with the VHS resurgence right now. It's like oh yeah, price gouging on stuff that really, and on a vinyl especially, like where it may not be in the greatest condition, you know, you might have a shit slip cover for it or the vinyl itself may be scratched to hell, but people are still getting a good dollar for it because it's an original pressing or an old pressing. So it's silly. Yeah, it's it's a world. The VHS shit is triggering. Yeah, sometimes. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about VHS sales just going crazy. Yeah, people are really abusing that right now. People are starting to get their VHS unopened. The big VHS. one is Thomas F. Wilkins Back to the Future one right now that just sold for like 75k but it was his and a lot of people are leaving that fact out of the uh like headline. Yes. Um, it's in the article usually it's just not in the headline and people are just sharing the headlines and not reading because that's what people do Which, what? speaking of that facebook you know is one of their light forms of trying to share something you know there's a few things i've read the article before just by browsing that i'll see it on facebook and i'll try to share it you guys in the group it's like you haven't read this article or you haven't clicked on this article are you sure you want to share it so, but if you just click on it, it doesn't verify that you actually read anything. It just verifies. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. their form of policing that. Did you pick anything up this week, dudes? Uh, the big thing I picked up was a new display case. So I got a badass book case at uh, Ikea. There's probably photos up on this uh, on our Instagram. If there's not, there will be by the time you're probably watching this. Justin, you should upload some to the, the podcast. Yeah. Oh, I, I got something. I got the Batman 89 grapple gun from NECA. Nice. How is that? I've got the battering. 
Oh yeah, it's electronic and it takes some uh, special battery, and I, I keep forgetting to get it at the store. Was it? I haven't, like, u- I haven't used the electronic camera. function. I mean, it electronically like reels in the the grapple screen and stuff oh, like nice. that. So you can be like all the time asking people how much they weigh and shit. A little more than 108, I think. That's my favorite <laughs> one of the Batman or the Penguin on Batman's back. I love more than 108. Yeah, I love that meme right now. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Uh, well, I had a couple things, just some small pickups. I went to uh, Dollar General, and they have these. Uh, you remember Fruit Stripe gum, right? Of course. Yeah, well, it doesn't last very long. But... but they have gummies, Fruit Stripe gummies now there. Uh, do they get you high? No. Not that type of gummy. They were a dollar, and um, given they have terrible ingredients, I ate one just so I could try it and say I did. But it wasn't even very good, and it didn't taste like Fruit Stripe gum, so. But they have three different flavors in the package. Lemon, cherry, and tangerine. And, um, if anything, this packaging is just, it rubs me the right fucking way, you know what I'm saying? So just having that around makes me feel good. I need some old fruit stripe gum packaging. I love that motherfucking. I, I should get a tattoo of that fucking zebra. You should with some stripes behind it, the pride stripes. That'd be a dope. Fuck, I fucking rules. He's on a skateboard a... down there. Like I should get that as a tattoo. Hell, that that a fucking Ringo zebra. They probably that... made the temporary. The tattoo. temporary tattoo like the temporariness of the flavor. <laughs> exactly. No, the even the sticks of gum had the temporary tattoos on them, like for your tongue yeah. or whatever. Remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. So when I worked at a, a Toys R Us in high school, Fruit Strike Gum was always there in the checkout yes. lanes. People That's where I remember it. getting it. So cool. Anytime we went there to get toys or anything, I was always like trying to squeeze that out of them too. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to, uh, well, I guess also at Dollar General, I finally found some of these drink and play Ghostbusters Afterlife Apple toy attached drink things. I popped in one earlier today, and I didn't see any of that, but they had a bunch of other, like, the character top ones. They just didn't have those. So well, on the, they had the character top ones, and then this was on the top shelf, like the very top shelf, and I barely saw them. But it was that yeah, one over... Uh, well, I'll tell you where, which one it is. I'm not going to tell everybody yeah. on here. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> earlier in the week, I was in Independence and finally went to the... Uh, Half price books over there, and found uh, the late '90s copy of Gremlins on VHS. In a nice black clamshell case. That's awesome. Yeah, which I didn't have. I have the other one, and it's currently signed by Zach Galligan. Um, I'm debating bringing that along too to see if I get Corey to sign that one as well. Oh yeah, yeah that'd be a good one. And the last thing I got was uh, Twin Peaks: The Final Dossier. Uh, yeah, no, I got those a while back on eBay, but you found one. Where did you find that at the thrift store, didn't you? Or at the yeah, bookstore? That was half price books, yeah. yeah. Still. And, you know, those were like 35, 40 bucks when they came out, and that was like seven or eight bucks there, so. Yeah. Solid. And I need to get the other one still, the uh, Secret History of Twin Peaks. But. Very nice. I do have Laura Palmer's Secret Diary already, so. Pretty solid there. Yeah, not a lot of other crazy stuff on the news this week. Really just... Uh... Well, actually, last thing I did last week, I think I got this, but at the thrift store, this phone you might see here. Oh, nice. It is a clock radio phone. And alarm clock. And... Uh, Does it I, need, I needed a phone here, and it's wood paneled, so... Nice, I like it. It's a wake-up call. <laughs> it's from uh, Unisonic. Is that an answering machine? Um, I don't you think so. You need to get one of those old wood panel answering machines to go with it. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. You need to it find has... one of those old school external caller ID things. When caller ID first came out, it was a thing you put yeah. in line with your phone. Yeah. One of those two. <laughs> yeah, I had one of those separate ones. Yeah. <sighs> so that's pretty much that. Yeah, so as far as news goes, I don't think there's anything too wild and crazy going on. It was a fairly quiet week. I mean, we got the last episode of Obi-Wan dropping this week. Um, I haven't caught up with Miss Marvel yet. That's the next big thing. I just need to sit down, but I've 
almost waiting to binge watch that one because I haven't seen any spoilers or anything on it. So I'm like, eh, I'm not in a rush. Obi Wan, yeah. I don't want to get messed up with anything. So I've been watching that as soon as I can. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's especially popular. So you're probably not going to get spoiled too easily. Yeah, it's the yeah. least watched of these Marvel yeah. shows so far. Not necessarily the lowest quality, but people half as many people have watched it as Hawkeye, which was the last one before that. I still haven't watched Hawkeye. I gotta get on that. See, I love that one, to be honest. You need a good Christmas to watch. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good around this this season. I mean, it was really well done. Kind of gave you those vibes, so I like that one. I'm thinking, I I still haven't watched uh, the new Stranger Things, and I guess the rest of the season dropped July 1st. Yep, coming right up soon. So we'll be doing it. I might as well just wait and watch watch it all then. Yeah, we'll be doing a full season recap after the end of the season, so kind of breaking it down. Nice. Pretty excited about that. Yeah. Really loved the season so far. It kind of felt fun and fresh again. Not was that, that season fart? three wasn't. Sounds like somebody ripped ass. Nope. Uh, I, I built. Oh, okay. I just meant the I distortion see. combined with Justin talking made it sound like a fart, I guess. <laughs> well, it is a fart out of your mouth. <laughs> That's so gross. That's awesome. It's a mouth fart or a butt burp. Well, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, you're just expelling excessive gases. <sighs> well, too bad All your right. penis can't burp. <laughs> you want someone to burp it, set it on their <laughs> shoulder so they can pat it and burp it. Your penis, your penis could queef. Yeah. Well, queefing is, you know, not the same either. That's just like, that's queefing is basically this. <laughs> Yeah, it's air, yeah, but I'm that's saying that was, trapped air. That was, that's getting out like natural gas from your GI. I'm not saying it's a gas, but I'm saying yeah, we yeah. can't make noise out of our penis. I mean, if you get me like a turkey baster, I bet I could queef out of my dick. We could do we could do that for Patreon. What is it? What do you think sounding is, Nick? You get to hear the what? metal fling. All you got to do is put the tube in. You know, yeah. make your own xylophone. Well, well, I meant I meant like without the device. I have a performance art idea. Oh, God. You get a bunch of different dudes to come on stage. And I don't mean come on stage. But they come on stage. Well, I mean, they might. I don't know. If sounding gets them off. A bunch of them. And they're naked and they're standing all in a line. Or in a circle or something. Like a circle jerk, kind of. And then one guy... Well, they're all sounding, basically. They all have the sound rod sticking out. But they... uh, You have pickups mounted where their pubes are. Like so, it can pick up the the ringing, mm-hmm. and then you electrify that, and somebody else is basically playing the dicks, <laughs> like a uh, xylophone sounding. Kind of like a washboard guitar, where you just put a pickup on a washboard, and you know, just amplify the sound, but just using the sounding rod instead. Yeah, that sounds like uh, that it, sounds it's... real experimental. I bet that'd be famous on the internet. Well, it's like a really cool version, a sexual version of how people put oil on glasses and do that thing, you know. Um, that's uh, what I'm thinking of, like... Sizes would have different frequencies based on the volume, length, and girth. Yeah. Sounding rod itself. Yeah, that'd be kind of... That'd be something. Yeah, just... just. I don't know what you do with that, but... These are what um, uh, COVID about, uh, fever brain is thinking of. What about, uh, you know, that the plate spinning? Oh, uh, yeah. You could have yeah. guys guys laying down with erect penises, and you gotta like run around and keep them spinning. Man, Alec is like deep in thought here. He's really. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it. imagine the Blue Man Group of sounding, like we called the Blue Group. I mean, you wouldn't parody them too hard, but I'm just thinking of like that level of weird shit. But instead of like, it's a much weirder, clearly. Well, how about people dressed as the Blues Brothers while they're in blue suits, like blue skin? <clears throat> what if Dan Aykroyd himself came and was sounding on stage, and that was just the act? And, but but he wasn't even like, it was like a one-time thing, and it was his first time sounding. And it was just like him being like, ooh, ah! Like trying to get it in and not, not without lube and shit. I, I imagine you have to have to lube to sound. I don't know. I've never really looked into it. I've heard about it. I've heard about it a lot from you. 
Yeah. I just figured you write it already. No. Uh, Dan, Dan's yeah. probably used a catheter before. Oh, I'm sure he has. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. I got to tell you about this catheter placement. <laughs> Jeez. Um, well, you want to get into this? perfect episode because... Tonight's feature film is Beavis and Butthead Do America. Sure is. And why are we covering this? Because Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe is about to release. Duh. Correct. Correct. In three days. Oh. Which I timed that so poorly. I'm going to have to resubscribe to my Paramount Plus for another month to get that. <laughs> At least it's only five bucks. Yeah, mine expires tomorrow. So I was like, oh, cool. I signed up for it like last week, so my free trial lasts a month, I think. Uh, mine was a seven day free trial, and then it was like five bucks for the first month. So I did the seven day trial and then the, huh. this. But I'm like, ah, there's a fair amount of stuff on there I still haven't gone through, so another month won't hurt me. Yeah, plus Twin Peaks is on there. They got good stuff on there, but the quality of their, uh, of their app is pretty poor. See, I haven't had any issues using the app on the Roku. Or I haven't had it, and I'm using it on the Xfinity one. I haven't used it on the Roku yet, but I haven't had any yet. But Yeah, but some of those apps, so you're using it on an Xbox, so right, Nick? And so that's causing you some... Yeah, yeah but I, I never have any problems with any other app, though, so I don't know. Could just be their Xbox first yeah, app. Yeah, I guess it could, I guess it could be. <sighs> All right. So you want to break this down? Yeah. It opens up, and uh, these motherfuckers are kaiju. I know. I love that. That's what I had. Like, the kaiju butthead starts off terrorizing the town, uh, and then kaiju. Uh, 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 uh. Shit rules. Uh, of course, he's uh, King kong it up and looking at this chick's tits, and is like, hey, baby. I'm like, pretty tall and shit. Uh, this intro always got me as a kid. I liked it. Beavis comes in and, you know, is blowing shit up, breathing fire and shit. Mm -hmm. Classic. Oh, yeah, he's amazing. I love how he's got the, uh, what do they call that, the atomic breath? Yeah. So he's, like, pulling the Godzilla roll. And I, you know, well, I mean, he doesn't really have atomic breath. He just has fire breath. Yeah, either way. That's the one that gave me the Godzilla vibes. Yeah. So I love that. Well, I, uh, I, assume, I, I assume Alec was too young to see this at the theater, but did you just... I'm pretty sure I yeah I'm pretty sure I saw it and see let's see when did this come out ninety six. I mean yeah I was five then and it my parents would let me watch Beavis and Butthead occasionally at home like if somebody else was watching it, but they weren't about to take me to this movie yeah but I do remember seeing the poster in in the theater when I saw I believe the Power Rangers movie, and being like fuck I want to see that. Yeah, but then they played it on TV all the time, so like we watched a bunch at home too. So. Yeah, I've seen this movie so many times. Yeah. And then just for some context around it, I remember like when the South Park movie eventually came out, everyone was like freaking out because, you know, like, oh, it's so much worse than the Beavis and Butthead movie. And like, really, this movie's not bad at all. It's it's funny. Yeah, and, like, it's kind of dick pretty tame, really. really. It's really not yeah. like super offensive or anything. It's mm -hmm. a couple of idiotic, horny teenagers, which really is like, if that's not relatable to the American people, I don't know what is. Yeah. They weren't ever... I don't think Beavis and Butthead were ever super offensive. They're just uh, crude fucking humor. Yeah. Pee-pee wiener, dog poop, dick jokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The principal's getting slapped on the ass by a fucking prostitute. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, just hilarious. Especially when you're a kid and you don't quite fully understand it. But you're yeah. like, this is hilarious still. Oh, you two are expelled. Yeah, I love how many voices Mike Judge does for this. <clears throat> so Classic. good. Um, I love when they wake up and the TV's gone. That's great though. And Bit Butthead's trying to put it together, just like uh, and he's staring from the broken window to the footsteps to the TV being gone to the front door open. Yeah, and he like he's like I figured it, and then he like thinks about it. And you think he's gonna like oh someone robbed us, and he's like this sucks. Yeah, <laughs> this sucks more than anything that has sucked before. We must find this butthole that took our TV. Yeah, pretty much. It's classic. You get the uh, shaft intro there, which is oh, that's beautiful. Also too. hilarious. I mean, I love how they're just like throwing some random spoofs into this thing. It's great. Yeah, why not? Um, 
Then they go down to the school to steal this TV. And I love it because like, that's genius. And it's like the one on carts that's like strapped down with a VCR. And I love how there's a camcorder on it too. Yeah. And they're just dragging the fucking camcorder along. No fucks. Yeah. Teacher comes out and tries to stop him. He's like, okay, you're going to have to stop. And that's obviously Mike Judge again doing this character. And I'd say, you know, this could be a really positive experience for you guys. You don't need TV to entertain us. (laughs) Did you guys hear a word I said? Uh, yeah. Anus. Yeah. (laughs) Entertain (laughs) us. Anus. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I hear it. Yeah. (laughs) That shit's gold. Look, just take it back to the AV room, okay? And then he goes back in there and just fucks off, and they they just leave with it. And I love when they break it. And oh, but, upstairs, like they tilt it like it's gonna go well, and then all of a sudden it just goes. You're like, oh god. And Beavis is reacting, no. And Bud is just like, that was cool. Yeah, Beavis yeah. is clearly the emotionally upset about this and distraught. I relate to Beavis in this when he's like later and he's like walking home and he's like clicking the remote and he's like, no. I can't sleep without TV. That's fucking like me. I need that shit to sleep. Yeah, that's your little safety blanket in life, right? Basically. The TV on in the background lets you go. And you've always been that way as far as I can remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I love it when they, uh, uh, Mr. Anderson's camper. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you are you boys here to look at the fridge? Uh, No, we're here to look at the TV. <laughs> go, go on in. He didn't tell me anything, bro. Exactly. Here's, there. here's the thing that gets me about this scene is they're then seen like watching TV and they're going like dun, 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 dun. But if you listen closely, they're watching the news. Yeah. They're not watching a music video. They're just making metal sounds over the news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just need that TV there to entertain them. And then Beavis gets up to get a drink, gets a soda out of the fridge. And this just shows you how stupid he is because he doesn't feel that the can is warm. Right. He opens it, takes a swig, and then spits it all over the TV. He's like, it's fucking warm. Well, sometimes the can can feel cold and the liquid inside isn't, though. So yeah. And like the a fridge is working well enough for that. And you know, like a warm soda will fizz a lot more than a chilled soda. So, yeah, I get that. He pissed off about it. I just think it's funny that they broke it. They, they have their TV still and they break two TVs within like a matter of 30 minutes. And uh, you get Bruce Willis. As Muddy. R.I.P. Uh, Bruce Willis is not dead. Oh. He's just retired. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, I kind of forgot. Retired, dead, same thing. And, and Hollywood, basically. Although I did see one of those movies that he's made at Walmart the other day. <laughs> These random oh. fucking action ones. It's just like Bruce Willis. Well, so, oh, who was the actor I saw? It was a big name actor that was in one of those movies with him. I can't remember now. I saw it on the Nick shelf Cage? at Walmart. <laughs> no. Because I, I knew Nick, Nick Cage is trying to pay off all that debt. That's why I did all those random indie roles. And then Bruce is oh. just trying to get money saved up to, you know, when he that, knew he was sick. That new movie that Nick Cage plays himself, I think, is out on video now. Oh, it is? Yeah, I didn't see that in theaters. But it's, it's yeah, we didn't. Yeah. There's so many movies to see. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we get uh, Bruce Willis playing Muddy, which he does a pretty good job because it doesn't sound just like standard Bruce Willis. He's like yeah. a little bit redneck and countryish that it just makes it fun. Like you can listen to it and hear it's him, but like if you're not paying close attention, you may not even really notice. Well, especially if you compare it to his other voice acting role and look who's talking. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, and then they basically uh, get coerced into... Doing his wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll do your wife for $10,000. Yeah. He wants us to do his wife. <laughs> He's going to pay us. I'm going to take you to the airport right now. Takes him down to the airport, drops him off. Beautiful. Uh, the airplane scene is great. God, he, that is first so Cornholio uh, appearance. After he goes rifling through Cloris Leachman's purse. Mm-hmm. She's great, too, as the old lady there that's just hanging out with him. She's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize that was her voice in it until I watched it on Amazon or whatever in the pop-up. So, so. Hmm. Oh, the credits and everything beforehand? Yeah. Yeah, it's always fun seeing that. Um, 
Yeah, I like that. Like uh, the the thing that triggers him. He's like hyper as fuck, and then you hear a guy asking him, uh, "Does the gumbo have corn in it?" <laughs> and the word corn triggers him, and he immediately stands up with the fucking hood on. I am Cornholio. And uh, this is like the best stuff as a, a kid. Yeah, I think she, she gives him that no-dose or whatever twice because she gives it to him then. And like I think he says he's got a headache. He takes it, and then he becomes the Cornholio, which is intense on that airplane. Keep flight. going. Hold on. So he loses his mind over this plane shenanigans. And then uh, one thing I love is what you see back. And then you see Dallas is in Vegas, and then obviously Dallas is a uh, cat. Bruce, Bruce Willis's wife at the time, so <clears throat> she does the voice of Dallas, which that's an interesting concept. A husband and wife couple doing like voice acting roles for a movie is as silly as this. Yeah. Demi Moore. So, and she does a pretty good job too. Like, it's hard to tell her. She sounds like a smoker in this, like, really raspy. Yeah, they both kind of add like a smoker's voice. Yeah. But I love how you see Muddy back at the hotel and Earl's guys finally show up, and it's the idiots that stole the TV. And once they realize the TV's broken inside the hotel room, it's like, hey, man, you want a TV? No. They fucking leave it. This thing's a piece of shit anyway. <laughs> um, Robert Stack is amazing. God damn. R.I.P. Handing out cavity searches like fucking candy. Oh, every time he's on there. And I want like full roto rooter. And you're like, yes. <laughs> um I want you to feel the back of their teeth. <laughs> it's amazing. He's so good in that. Like perfect. And the fact that you do silly roles like this, like that's just amazing. Like, you know, somebody that has a sense of humor like that, going from unsolved mysteries to this and then when he spoofs himself in basketball, like lots of respect for Robert Stack. I love, uh, we get to the, uh, the old lady again. And she, he was just like, yeah, how'd you do? And she's like, me, I took a beat. No. Oh. oh yeah. Cause they're all talking <laughs> about getting late. And he's like, wow, it's really impressive. <laughs> yeah. She took a beating, you know, um, Hoover Dam go over the hoover dam scene that's always pretty good so <laughs> i love beavis in room that, beavis in that whole sequence is amazing because he's like oh that's very interesting uh, <laughs> or that's enlightening or some shit you know he's like talking like he's not a complete idiot he says i'll be damned yeah i'll be damned <laughs> that's fascinating uh classic stuff yeah uh he's already had the chips on into his pants at this point and he's uh like flicking his ass on the switch because <laughs> there's something wrong with my butt. <laughs> and that's like when they give you the... the Your breakdown. butt sucks. Yeah, they give him the breakdown of like the virus and everything. They're like, it could kill humanity. The only design flaw is the case. It could break easily. Cue to Beavis kicking his... Or cue to Beavis getting his ass kicked by butthead like right in the, right in the square of it. Right. Amazing. Um... Oh, uh, yeah, they get to Yellowstone, and then they end up getting on the nun bus. And uh, and he's talking about, like, hey, yeah, he, he bought it. This book's pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, there's a talking snake, there's a naked chick, and this dude puts a leaf on his schlong. Yeah. And I forget the word schlong until he says it. I'm like, oh, my God, I haven't heard that word in forever. Right? It's, like, so old school. You're like, oh, man, it's terrible. <laughs> I'm going to start bringing it back. No, please don't. It's terrible. Well, yeah, with the new movie coming out, it probably will be back in full stride in the pop culture's idea. Hopefully, guys. they'll say schlong in it. Oh, I guarantee you they will. They have to. I, I feel like schlong is equivalent to cunt. It's like the dirtiest word for that, I think. You, you think so? I think that's pretty tame by comparison because you could say schlong to someone that doesn't know what that is and they'd be like, hmm. I feel like cock is that comparison. There's not anything much worse than that because that's so like abrasive sounding. Yeah. Like cunt is. Uh, Cock. Yeah, but people say cock a lot. I don't. They don't say schlong a lot. They certainly don't say cunt a lot in this country. Well, Brits say cunt and cock. Yeah, cunt, the, cunt is a term of endearment everywhere else. But over here, it's the most offensive. Yeah, it's the worst word you can ever. I think you can call the most beautiful butterflies on the planet. Facebook auto bans your ass for that word. I know. 
<laughs> for the word cunt. Yeah. That's for good. Um, <clears throat> Beavis has the speech on the bus about never getting laid. Oh, wait, that's much further down. Okay. Oh, the petrified forest. Yeah, the petrified forest. Oh, no, the... Again, the confession booths at the church. <laughs> oh, isn't that good? The whole Catholic church thing. So, One of my favorite little bits in there, yeah. They, uh... Porto parties. Exactly. Porto parties. I gotta take a dump. Uh, I had sex with a woman. Really? <laughs> Was she naked? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shut your boobs. <laughs> wow, yeah. Shut your boobs. Uh, yeah. Check it out. <clears throat> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, what does Beavis say to the guy? He's like, yeah, how many Hail Marys? A thousand! And I want you to hit yourself! As hard as you can. <laughs> now? Right now! Again! <laughs> Just in there beating the shit out of himself. And I love how at the uh, Petrified Wood, when they go there to the uh, museum, the National Forest, whichever one that is, uh, the nuns ditch them. They realize <laughs> they're behind and they get the hell out of there. You may wonder, how can wood get so hard? Well, the wood became hard over however the fucking thousand years ago, he says. I don't remember. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> amazing dialogue. It's just brilliant. And then they walk out into the desert. Uh, where's Washington? Uh, about, like, what does he say? Like, 2,000, 3,000 miles that way. <laughs> yeah. like, cool. And they just start walking. And you get the uh, hallucination scene after uh, oh, the he just bites into peyote. Yeah, the peyote cactus. That's amazing. Which, um... You don't understand, and then as an adult, you're like, "Oh, so many psychedelics and cactus." With the yeah. white zombie song, mm -hmm. uh, which, by the way, is that the only song in the movie? No, there's lots of songs in the movie. I mean, um, there's literally like six or seven that I can think of. Um, oh, okay, maybe I just wasn't paying that much attention. There's the Red Hot Chili Peppers covering uh, "Roller Coaster." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. By uh, Ohio Players, which I prefer the Ohio Players version, but that is like the most tolerable the Red Hot Chili Peppers have ever been to me. It's playing somebody else's song that doesn't suck. That's fair. <laughs> um, and then there's um, Muddy's listening to Butthole Surfers, I think. Oh, okay. When he's right after Beavis and Butthead caused that pile up, I think he's listening to Butthole Surfers. There's a couple other things. Um, where was I? Where's my notes picking up? Oh, well, I was going to say this desert hallucination scene while we're talking about it. I'm surprised neither of you have brought this up, but uh, one of the new directors for the new Ghostbusters projects directed this scene, basically. Oh, okay. That one guy that's who was in the movie in Ghostbusters 2. Remember that guy we talked about him? Oh, yeah. yeah. He directed this segment, the music video segment there, basically. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. That's um, long history in animation then yeah muddy finds them puts them in his fucking trunk yeah meanwhile i love it how they destroy oh. tom Anderson's camper after that pile up you know they're looking for him they just fucking well, that, that hasn't happened yet but i think i also skipped out on them meeting their fucking dads in the desert oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's amazing <laughs> stopped off in this uh dump called uh island whoa that's where we're from. Yeah. Too stupid to figure it out. And like, yeah, we scored with two chicks. I scored with both of them. <laughs> Beavis says it too. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, or are they Motley Crew roadies or some shit is what they were describing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, and then they're, uh, the, yeah, like I said, they're picked up, they're in the trunk and he starts using the jack. Hey, Bavis, check it out. I'm jacking off. Mm -hmm. Pops the trunk open. Gets the trunk open. And I love the, the chat they have there where he's like, just start running really quickly when you hit the ground. And he's like, ah, I don't know about that. <laughs> he fucking just slaps his ass out of there. And then yeah. you have that big pileup scene. Well, what he, what he actually does try the running, though, before he like road runners and like spills over into himself, oh, yeah. right? like Wiley Coyotes. And it's, it's amazing. It's so good. The virus canister uh, survived that, though. Yeah. Yes. And then, obviously, Butthead, they, they fucking, like, hit a bump or whatever, and he gets tossed out. 
That's amazing. Uh, they get back on the original bus because they're fine, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old lady finds them there, and she's like, hey, Beavis and Butthead. Or uh, Tra Travis and Bobhead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Beavis has the speech about how we're n we're never gonna score, and look at this guy—he's really old, but he's probably had—he's probably done it a thousand times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One thing we like briefly forgot though, and right before all that was the uh, Beavis has that flashback to being a sperm. He's like, ah, I scored. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was way before in the desert, the hallucination. Yeah, like right uh -huh. before they got put in the trunk. Because Budhead hallucinates before that too, and just sees them like sitting on the couch growing up. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they get to Washington. Yeah, and then we see Muddy and Dallas bang it out in the uh, car garage that they're looking for. Matt gets pissed off that they're not in the car, and then they wind up getting caught by the FBI when they're banging in the back seat. Typical. Pretty funny scene there. It's like such a white trash thing to do, and you're like, yes, it works so well for this. Is it white trash to bang in a car? Yeah, what's, what's up with that? I was about to say, I might be pretty fucking white trash then, my guy. Uh, I'm, talking about the, I'm talking about the two characters that are like love Haiti trying to plotting to kill uh, each other. And cause... yeah, yeah, no, that'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll give that to you. They're literally paying to kill each other. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Not that, yeah. People have sex in public all the time. No big deal. Whatever. Who cares? I don't know, bud, Ed. Maybe if we... That is a lot of money. Maybe if we close our eyes and pretend he's a chick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that. That's hilarious. Isn't that a great scene? <laughs> I love it. Um, Then Beavis takes more of the no-dos. Yeah. They're going on fucking tour and he's drinking shit. And... Well, that's how Xanax. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he can't read, so he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I love how he goes through and like eats all the candy in the purse too, finds all the candy because she's an old lady, so they've got like, you know, whatever they look like, peppermints or whatever. And Jordan almonds and shit, probably. Yeah, and then he starts eating all the sugar cubes for the coffee and tea, <laughs> yep. and guzzling that. It's hilarious. The sound effects are so good on that, like the guzzling. It's hilarious. Gotta love it. And yep. He uh, goes Cornholio. Mm -hmm. I love how you think you're going to see Bill Clinton in the office, at the Oval Office, when he's wandering around in there. But Butthead has the encounter with Chelsea. He's like, I thought you wore bracelets. I wore bracelets, too. Right. <laughs> then he gets thrown out the window. Oh, man. To think this was made when Clinton was in office, like how long ago that fucking seemed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know. Isn't it crazy? Ridiculous. Um, and then eventually Beavis makes his way back to the uh, the camper because he realized like he can beat off in there and he's horny. So mm -hmm. <laughs> starts making all the sounds and like looking at it. That's another song. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. I own the soundtrack to this um, when I was a kid. No, oh, nice. It was pretty good. It's entertaining. There's Rancid's on the soundtrack, too. Don't you remember that song? Oh, shit. I guess it is, isn't it? I can't remember what the name of that song is, but it's during a road driving scene with that guitar line. That... Well, they kept going back to that random ska that wasn't... I didn't feel like it was an actual song. That wasn't Rancid, I don't think, but that was... Well, you can look, like look it up on Spotify or anything. People have made the... Shit, I, I listened to some of it yesterday. <clears throat> oh, yeah, but uh, basically he ends up surrounded by the police because of the unit and shit. Um, My unit? Exactly. Yeah, no, that's awesome because then basically it looks like Tom Anderson framed him the whole time because obviously they find the photo of Dallas when they find it in there and like, this is sick, man. You know, blame these two children for it. I love how the music gets dark as he's getting arrested and shit, too. Mm -hmm. I love how Butthead catches the unit, and he's just like, uh, here you go. Right. <laughs> like, fucking on edge and, like, take a slow moment. You're like, oh, okay. 
Um, I'm hereby making you honor agents in uh, bureaus of alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Yeah, so the Rancid song is I Want a Riot. The yeah. other ska song that sounds very generic and boring, I'm pretty sure is uh, Snakes by No Doubt. It is. I don't think it is because yeah. I listened to it yesterday and that did not sound like a ska song. Oh, interesting. I can see why you'd think that, but yeah. And then of course the fucking majestical song "Lesbian Seagull," <laughs> and there's both versions of that. And there, there's like the teacher singing that version of it, and then there's the credits version. This is rancid. This is the No Doubt song. Hmm. All right. Looks like to be a closer yeah. look. There's also Gone Shooting by ACDC, White Trash, Southern Culture on the Skids. I know it's not LL Cool J or Butthole Surfers. So. Yeah, yeah, Gone Shooting plays during the movie, too. Yeah, that's on there. Yeah, solid movie. Though. Um, yeah, no, I have a, I have a lot too, of so. Yeah, held up. It, it's still pretty funny, right? You know, you see it on there, and you're like, "Oh, I remember this movie being like super hilarious as a kid." And then it's it about better than I thought it has. It's a perfect nostalgia movie for that era too, because kind of captures everything there. It has a lot of pop culture references that aren't. It doesn't make it feel dated necessarily. It just makes it feel. Of a time, I guess. I don't know. I guess that is dated, but I don't well, care. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like you're watching it. It seems like so out of place. It feels like it fits very much in a specific place. So I think it holds in my up. heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only thing I think they could have done different on that was to have like a music video scene or two at the beginning or the end. Just something. But I think having the TV broken just explains why, which is kind of a great plot device that the TV is broken so they can't sit around and watch it all the time. But, well, yeah, that is honestly a brilliant um, idea for a Beavis and Butthead movie. Like, yeah, you see, if you're thinking about it in the context of the show and how the show was built around the music videos. Yep. Yeah, and they did a good job, you know, because a lot of movies would have tried to shoehorn in like every single thing they do in the in the show. Right. And they didn't go to the fast food place where they work. Right. They didn't do any of that. And they easily could have gone to those places. But this is pretty yeah. fresh for a movie based off a TV series like that. So I give it a lot of credit. Like the writing's clever. It's characters you like, but it's not the same old stuff from the TV show. It's some different things. And they got a pretty good voice cast in there, too. You know, having a couple of big hitters in there to kind of come fill out the cast works. Did you ever watch the, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure you did, but did you also, Nick, watch the, uh, season they did like 10 years ago yeah that was a 20 yeah. season revival yeah that actually was really well done too it is so. well I people did. complain people complain that there wasn't a lot of music videos they watched like uh, uh they watched other and shore and, yeah they watched jersey shore and whatever and i thought that was pretty funny actually I, it was perfect and timely it's like if you're going to update the show that's a way to do it because mtv plays that shit now and that's what they're doing is watching tv yeah what do they what do they do like a dozen episodes or something yeah, it, was, it wasn't a huge season, but it was like one season. So but yeah, see, no, I thought it was really good. If you buy the complete collection of Beavis and Butthead, whatever, at Walmart right now, it includes that, it includes the movie, and it includes the original show. It just doesn't have most of the music videos in there. Yeah. What do they What do they call the specific short that it was based on? Was that like Frog Baseball or Frog Ball or something like that? I think Frog Baseball. Yeah, because yeah. like they're basically hitting a frog as a baseball. It's kind of fucked up, but that's basically the pilot they got it picked up as a series. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I think it holds up, man. For a, a movie adaption, really has a something clever and fresh for what it was. And then that was a show they didn't really beat to death. It only had like what four or five original seasons, the movie, and then the revival season. So it wasn't like really drawn out. Yeah, I don't know how they did their seasons. They could have, you know, as the '90s stuff could have been syndicated and not syndicated, but like order differently and stuff kind of like how extreme ghostbusters was a weird I think paramount paramount plus has listed like four or five seasons okay 
Yeah, and that's what I thought. I mean, there might be longer seasons, but still it's not a crazy amount. You know, when you compare that um, Mike Judge didn't do the Daria TV series because that's he was eight seasons here, what I'm looking at. Was it? What I'm looking at says eight seasons, yeah. I think Paramount Plus only has like four or five. Well, that's what I'm saying. They might even call them. Yeah, it could be all eight, and they just list them. I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, cause there's different alternate versions of the series, too, because they might be using the Mike Judge collection and just having a different... Because that's not the same as the original show run and things, you know? It's a whole thing. It's yeah. like how if you buy Daria, I have the entire Daria box set also. And a lot of the music has been replaced in that. Yeah, because they didn't retain the rights for it. So, yeah, you're not yeah. getting the original stuff. Which sometimes even happens from movies like theatrical release to the home video release. Not as common as it used to be, but um, lots of times you get stuff replaced just because of one reason or another. So. Fucking lame. Well, let us know what you dudes think of uh, dudes and dudettes and those in between. Mm-hmm. Or... Uh, not withholding to any gender. Yeah, let us know your favorite episode of Beavis and Butthead. One of my favorite episodes, and I forget the title of it, but um, they're working at the burger joint, and they're told to change the fry oil. So they don't know how to change the fry oil. So they go to a, a auto parts store and buy oil and replace the fry oil with that huh. <laughs> instead of vegetable Christ. oil. It's a fucking amazing episode. I'm like, this is the dumbest people in America. Beautiful. <laughs> I think my favorite episodes, uh, I don't remember the title either, but at one point, it might be called Woodshop or something about Woodshop. Oh, yeah. Beavis is staring at a blade and with this one part, and it keeps cutting back and forth between his eyes and the blade, and then he just literally goes like this with his finger and cuts his finger off. (laughs) And then he's like going to the nurse, and Butthead's picking his nose with Beavis' finger and shit. (laughs) It's fucking brutal. All right, yeah, just let us know what your favorite one is in the episodes, if you're excited about Do the Universe or not. And I think they got another season coming after the movie, right? I think I think so. Uh, with them doing the, the streaming service now, I think we're going to see a lot more Beavis and Butthead. Well, and I think Mike Judge, like, the only reason he came back, he did it in 2011, he's like, I have something new and something fresh to do, right? He felt like he could do it again, so I'm glad. He's been trying to get a third or another movie made for, like, 10 years, though, too. Yeah. Oh, he's had it tossing around in the back of his head. He, I think he's said that Beavis and Butthead is the thing he's, it's his favorite thing he's done. So, yeah. I mean, and he's got a good resume too, right? Obviously, Office Space. I um, would be surprised if we get a King of the Hill movie or something at some point either. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. He also did the TV series Silicon Valley for HBO, which I didn't know he, I didn't know he was the, oh, creator I didn't, of that yeah. program. That's why I watched it when I did, but I eventually lost interest after a season. <laughs> fair all right well we will see you guys soon